Hey guys, I'm working on putting together an order at Mouser Electronics for various projects, including my Philco 643 and Motorola VT71 and these two Admirals that we dropped off recently. I do have what I think are the correct schematics for them, but I want to pull out the chassis to double check. So first up, I'm doing the tabletop. I'm also curious about this picture tube. I can finally verify if it uh, is a 16 or a 17 inch. There were no screws holding this chassis in place, which is pretty common. All I need to do now is get the speaker out of the way, because as I pull this back, the picture tube is butting up against it. I think all I need to do is flip up this piece of spring steel. There we go. Set that down, and now I can pull it out. With the speaker out of the way, the chassis slid right out. Here's a look at the front, and I still suspect this is not the original picture too. I think the original would have fit tighter in these corners. But hard to say for sure. Oh, it looks like somebody wedged a piece of something down in here. Foam or something. There's nothing on this side. Oh, this is actually supported down here. Oh, I see. So we got a rubber thing down here, and one on either side, and then a strap holding the whole thing in place. Well, as long as it works, I don't really care where it came from. Here's a look at the rest of it. It will all be in fine condition. All the tubes are there. Nice copper plated chassis, so no corrosion. Alright, let's take a look underneath. It turns out the speaker is attached with a plug to the back of the chassis, so I disconnected that and put it safely out of the way. And here, the bottom of the chassis. For the most part, it looks to be original and in good condition. First thing that jumped out at me though is this some spliced in wires. This uh, is a vertical output transformer, I do believe. And uh, hopefully this replacement was the correct model. Of course, I'll do a better job of Splicing this in and covering it up. This old electrical tape is completely falling off. All the adhesive has dried up long ago. Heat shrink tubing is a much better way to do this. Otherwise, it looked to be all the original components. So maybe for this guy, which is disgusting. It's oozing some kind of substance. Hard to tell if it's coming from this or dripped out of the thing that's above it. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's inside this box, so that could be the base of the high voltage rectifier and filter capacitor. I'm not sure. Okay. I might just be using out of that spray capacitor. Alright, hate when they do this. A couple of these capacitors, this one and this one, have metal bands around them that are screwed onto the chassis. Well, often they're pop riveted. I guess screws aren't so bad because I can just take that off and remove the capacitor. Otherwise, um, I use like a Dremel cutoff wheel and cut these bands so I can get the caps out. Not sure about this one. This one looks like it is riveted on. huge power resistor back here. That's one of the things I wanted to verify on the schematic. They said that there was a, uh, <clears throat> I think it was a 15 watt power resistor and it's attached to the chassis. I hope it's still good. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, I'll have to be careful about the replacement because it needs to dissipate a lot of heat and I assume that's why they attach this to the chassis so that the chassis can act as a big heat sink for it. 
these guys gotta go, these crappy sand coated resistors they always start corroding and um, eventually the copper oxidizes and it becomes an open circuit these are kind of interesting looking, these are actually German resistors probably replacements well there are an awful lot of them weird I don't recall ever seeing a whole bunch of German resistors in the, an American TV from the 50s before. And they, you know, these have to be original. They couldn't have, somebody couldn't have replaced so many resistors in this set, especially when all the capacitors look to be original for the most part. Huh. All right. I suppose I might as well pull the chassis out of the console version of this for a little comparison. There were actually two bolts holding this chassis in. Once I removed them, the chassis slid out pretty easily. Here's a look inside the cabinet. It's in pretty good condition, other than the foam gasket around the screen. Over time, it's just turned into the consistency of Cheetos. Of course, I'll be replacing that. There's a speaker. All right, so that's for the chassis. Now that they're side by side, you can definitely see a difference between the picture tubes. So this is the unknown RCA Silverama that I suspect is a newer replacement, and here is what I think is an original. So as you can see, it's fatter around the body of it, and it's shorter by about uh, half an inch or so. So if you look at the chassis, this base ends right about at the edge of the chassis whereas this one sticks out a bit. This chassis is also heavier. These really early rectangular pitcher tubes are quite heavy because they use really thick glass. Otherwise, other than one being copper plated and one not, they look to be identical. At least from the top. So I'll flip this guy over and let's take a look underneath. Well, there's certainly one difference on this set I noticed right away. It doesn't have those German resistors. And these are all American style carbon composition resistors. It's also had a bit more work done to it, like these two capacitors are replacements. This is the one that was oozing on the other set. This one's nice and dry. It's also been some work done up here. Here's a big power resistor we saw on the other set. This is a replacement resistor. This capacitor's been replaced. Otherwise, though, it looks to be in pretty good condition. I don't see any parts missing or burned out or anything. Something else that's different between the two is on this set, there's this knob thing sticking out here and underneath there's a connector here some wires going to it and there is none on this set I think what that is is for a color conversion kit there was a standard being proposed by CBS in the early 50s for color broadcasting that was quite different from what was finally adopted the CBS system would alternate broadcasting red green and blue signals but in the same basic format as black and white. What you would do on your TV is have a giant wheel with color transparencies of red, green, and blue. You attach that to a motor that would spin around in front of the screen. So when the red part of the picture was being broadcast, you had the red transparency in front of it, and the green, and the blue, and it would spin fast enough that in your mind, your, your brain would assemble those flashes of red, green, and blue into a normal color image uh, it didn't catch on because <laughs> once you get the sets of this size the color wheel would be huge because it has to be the entire screen size times two plus with a little extra for the, for the hub in the middle so 16 inch set uh, you'd be looking at probably like a 36 inch uh, <laughs> diameter wheel <laughs> and a huge motor to drive it 
So that's why it was never adopted. Yeah, well, that's enough for me to uh, get going with placing my order. And uh, probably in a week or so the parts will be here. Maybe by then the weather would be cool off enough that I can actually work in my workshop, which is not air conditioned very well. Oh, and one last thing about the other Admiral set I picked up. Here's the final Bakelite Admiral set that I talked about in a previous video. As you may recall, it's got a gaping hole in the top. Really, I bought this just for parts to complete my other Admiral 19A11 set. When I posted pictures of this online, some people were encouraging me to try to repair it. And I suppose, sure, I could use Bondo and whatnot and fill this in, but <laughs> that would take a lot of work and I've got plenty of other projects to work on. However, I was searching around on Craigslist and what do you know, somebody local is selling just an Admiral 19A11 Bakelite cabinet with a speaker. Uh, so if I bought that, the only thing I would be left uh, to get for the other set is the CRT shield. It's a metal shield that goes over the glass CRT that's missing in my other set. However, I think I know where I might be able to scrounge one of those. They uh, say they're going to be bringing it to the uh, Antique Radio Club of Illinois Radio Fest in a few days, so if I see them there and I have any money left in my pocket, I just might pick it up and end up restoring two of these guys. Someone had asked me if I'd be recording any footage at the uh, at the radio fest. I wasn't planning on it. Uh, normally I just take a few still photos, but my new smartphone can record high def video, so I just might be recording some footage for you guys. Otherwise I'll definitely take some photos and put together some kind of video or at least provide you a link of the photos I took. This is where I think I can scrounge a shield for that 7JP4 picture too. This is an RCA W056A oscilloscope, which just so happens to have used a 7JP1 CRT. P1 is green phosphor, P4 is white phosphor. Picked this up a while ago, really just for that 7JP1, because it's electrically virtually identical to the 7JP4, so I use it when I test my set so I don't damage the hard to find 7JP4. So here's the shield. It's just a question of, will this fit into that Admiral set? I think it will, and even if it does, and I imagine a little bit of finesse, maybe a little bit of cutting action, I can get it to fit in there. Alright, I'm going to go put together my order for Mauser Electronics, and that is all for now.